Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. I am joined today by Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. How are you? I'm doing great. So great to be with you, Sean. Well, listen, I got my cowboy boots. Yes, I got you my do. Hat. I'm in Colorado, and I'm not. I'm not really a poser, and here's why. <laughs> I I grew up in Montana. Okay, till I was 12. So you know the saying is, or I don't know, maybe I'm making the saying up, but uh, you know you could take a boy out of the mountains, but you can't take the mountains out of a boy. Sure. Anyway, I like we'll it. go with that. <laughs> uh, so, hey, listen, we're, we're gathered in Colorado Springs, and uh, we're just so excited that you're here, that many other um, uh, legislators are here from across mm-hmm. the state, and people are gathered, and there really is a movement right now that we're yeah. experiencing of, of the church is starting to engage. And yes. I, I want to say this, and then I, I just want to hear your thoughts on this. You know, um, I think a lot of people in the church didn't understand the power that the government had until COVID happened. Right. I know for us, like, we didn't know our Congress member. We didn't know our senators. Mm -hmm. You know, like, my wife, we didn't, heck, people didn't even know their governor. Yes. And then all of a sudden, they're having to be like, what? I, you're telling me I can't do this. You're telling me I can't do this. And you're, every night, you're like tuning in to the media. You're tuning in to, you know, uh, to, on Twitter or whatever to find out what your politicians say that you can do. And so now it's like, we're not just seeing like the Elon Musk's and the Joe Rogan's and the other people being red pilled. Right. We're seeing the church starting to say, well, hold on a sec. I didn't know like people in the church say, don't be involved in politics. And then all of a sudden politics regulates when you can have church. Yes. So what are your thoughts on this? What are you seeing? Oh, so many. Um, So, so first of all, you better have an interest in politics because they have an interest in you. Right. Uh, and, and your livelihood. Uh, government right. absolutely has an interest in the people and how much control that they that it can have over the people. Our founding fathers were men of faith. Uh, right. They declared independence before they had it. Right. They celebrated that independence as though it belonged to them. Then they went out and fought the battle until they obtained it. Uh, and, and they knew what it was like to live under tyranny and oppression. And they wanted to make a government so powerful that no other country could ever impose that tyranny and oppression on our people again, Mm -hmm. but a government so small that it could never itself impose that same tyranny and oppression on its people. And that was the vision of our founding fathers. And COVID really did open up the doors to how much power has been allocated Mm -hmm. uh, to the the federal government, to our our state and local governments, and uh, and how little power the people actually have. And and that's where the power is supposed to be held. That's where it's derived from. But we've been giving it away uh, for for so many years, for so many decades. And um, this really showed us government can come in and shut down your business. They could shut down your children's schools. They can shut down your church and tell you when and where you could worship, when you could go to a grocery store, how old you have to be at what time to go and shop and all of these restrictions. And so many members of the church know freedom because they have been set free. And to live again in bondage after you have been free is unacceptable. Yeah. And so I think that that's why we are seeing so many people in the church rise up and say, you know, I, I'm not going to attack a person. I, I know the word and I know that we don't war against flesh and blood. Right. We, we war against rulers, right. principalities, powers, and, uh, and, and they're taking their authority. They are positioning right. themselves and taking their authority both in the spiritual and in the natural. And Sean, I can tell you from personal experience, now that I am a, a sitting congresswoman, I've been in rooms where conversations are taking place that decisions impact millions and millions of people. The decisions made in one conversation impact millions of people. And that is why we need Christians in those rooms, sitting at those tables, having those conversations. The world is searching for answers and we have the answers on the inside of us. The creator lives on the inside of us. Come on. And, And I love, you know, God has, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, fiery men and women like this, and we're, we're continuing to meet them, and, and you'll continue to hear more of them on this podcast. But, you know, let's take Colorado, for example, mm-hmm. okay? Because that's why we're here. There's going to be people from across the state. I think, you know, I live in California. People think it's long gone. It's too far. There's no hope. And uh, what they don't realize is there's more conservatives in yes. California than there are in almost any other state, yes. probably. Now, Colorado, everyone says it's trending the wrong way. There was a time when it was 
red, there was a time when it was this, now you've got this state that is not even purple anymore. People say it's just blue. And and so that, and then and then we see things like this radicalized abortion bill, mm -hmm. you know, that the mm -hmm. governor's putting forth. We see he was one of the first to really single out churches and target yes. them during the pandemic. Um, you see the sex ed, you see all the crazy stuff coming out of Colorado. And I think for a lot of, of Christians and believers in these blue, purplish states, they just feel like, well, what's the use? Mm -hmm. You know, what am I gonna do to move the needle? Why, why even take a stand? And even worse, you have this conservative uh, uh, train of thought or ideology that tells people, well, just move to Florida, just move to Texas. Right. And I'm like, guys, that's such a defeatist mentality. Yes. Like we're not, yeah, I love DeSantis. He's right. amazing. I love to, you know, he comes to the stuff that we do and we're down there. I think he's incredible. Right. But it, it's not our call as people that follow Jesus or even the call of the gospel to just right. retreat to easy places. What would be your encouragement to people that live in those kind of states? Uh, uh, keep keep pressing in. Uh, you know, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. And uh, God has no pleasure uh, in, in those, those who draw back. back. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have to keep pr pressing on. And I, I don't want to relinquish my land, my state, to the enemy. Right. I don't want to give any ground to the enemy. I, I, I don't care if I am the last person here, the last remnant that is left. Yeah. You know, there's still someone here speaking life and truth. And, uh, you know, there, there was lots of talk, even in, in my own household, you know, we could, we could go live in America, we could go to South Dakota. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. but, but what joy, what victory is that, yeah. you know, to just up and leave, like you said, it's a defeatist mentality. Um, so we, we absolutely need to dig in now more than ever and, and take a stand um, for, for all that's been given to us, all that's been fought for in the past. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's been so much blood that's been shed for our freedom and right. for us to just move somewhere else because it's a little tough. Right. Um, you know, that that's not the answer. And, and that's exactly why we're seeing so many people rise up right now. Right. And I also feel like that we're going to be really surprised, right? Just like we were with Virginia. Mm -hmm. You know, I yes. lived in Virginia, went to high school in Virginia. It was always blue. And, you know, uh, they just overplayed their hand there. Absolutely. And they went absolutely crazy, psycho left. And yes. it swung back. Do you see that happening in a state like I, this? I really do. Um, so I, I travel Colorado just about every day. Every day that I'm not in Washington, D.C., I am traveling Colorado. I represent almost half the state and have to drive through even more of that to get How to How big most, is your district? It, massive. It, it's about half the state. Uh, it's oh it's. God. It's about 55,000 square miles. That uh, it's is crazy. Uh, beautiful, though. And uh, so I, I traveled just about the entire state. Uh, conservatives are here. Right. The, the right belief. Right. Farmers and ranchers right. aren't wanting this woke ideology. Farmers right. and ranchers aren't wanting uh, right. comprehensive sex ed for our children and, and for free speech to be suppressed right. and for people to be kept out right. of church. You know, no, they love the Lord. Yeah. They are good stewards of the land that they've been given. And uh, you know, Colorado is very much red. But unfortunately, when it comes to actually voting, we were asleep behind the wheel. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the left just kind of creeped in. And it was a shock to us all when it happened. But we are wide awake. Um, we're awake and not woke, and we are we are getting um, back to that rightful place and getting involved. We're taking our school right. boards back over. Yeah. We've had so many victories in school boards awesome. and, and local community Come elections. Uh, yes, and, and so this is the victories that we're we're seeking out, and, and we will obtain. Um, but in in all of this, uh, I think conservatives have that desire to live a quiet and peaceable life. Right. And, and that ended up being our downfall because we thought that everything was good and that we could just go on living uh, amongst ourselves, you know, um, but we really do have to get out on the front lines right now and take back what belongs to us. What do you see happening uh, come November, 2022? Like, what, oh what God, are you feeling? Uh, goodness, I would love uh, to see a, a complete shift, especially yeah. in our state legislature yeah. with, with that, that horrible, um, abortion bill that was codified yeah. really this is how Colorado was already operating right. um, but they just made it to where if Roe right. versus Wade was was overturned that it would not affect um, and impact Colorado um, and, and so I, I would really love to see a what a red wave there and I think that we will that we have fantastic candidates yeah. um, running for Senate running Many for governor here today. yes yeah. yes and so you know it's it's really exciting um, and then it, in our in our local communities there are people yeah. rising up people People have had no interest in politics before, never run for public office, right. and they're saying, I need to do this to serve the people in my community. Right.
I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So there's a lot of good news, guys. Everyone out there, you people in Colorado. I mean, I I live in California. I'm tempted every other day to go back to Montana, uh, but there are victories, and I and I think that you know, you know, bringing it back to scripture, I. I think of that verse, you know, the cloud the size of a man's hand. Yes. You know? Yes, and, and the, get excited. And the intentionality mm -hmm. of uh, to, to continue to pray. No, no, go back again, pray. Go back again, pray. Go back again, pray. And continue to pray. And then the celebration that takes place. Yes. Like, I celebrate you. I celebrate where God's put you because you are a prophetic sign mm. of that, that cloud the size Glory. of a man's hand. You know? Yes. And I know that rain's coming. Yes. I know that harvest is coming. And so we're just, we're so grateful for you. And this is going to be a great day. And we were together in the Supreme Court earlier yes. this week. Yes. And this is an amazing season to Absolutely. hold the line. Thank you so yes. much. Thanks, Jonathan.